Understanding God and His will for our lives, especially in choosing a life partner, is a unique journey we all experience. It's about knowing His guidance and the purpose He has for our relationships. Truly understanding God's will for your relationship goes beyond your intuition. It involves the Holy Spirit confirming God's purpose for you, taking you by the hand, and leading you into it one step at a time. You need to understand that being led by the Holy Spirit is a precious gift for every believer. We cannot do anything good without Him. Just as Jesus told His disciples in John 16, 13, But when He, the Spirit of truth, comes, He will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on His own. He will speak only what He hears, and He will tell you what is yet to come. Take note of those words. He will guide you into all truth. This means that if you're in the truth, or if you want to end up in the truth, then the Holy Spirit must lead you. If He doesn't lead you, you cannot end up in your true destiny. Abraham serves as a perfect example of someone who knew and obeyed God. His unconditional relationship with God allowed him to understand and obey God, including when choosing a spouse for his son Isaac. Friends, there is no confusion with God. If He's telling you yes, why not obey Him? Abraham's faith and obedience to God's timing are recorded as an example for us. Galatians 3.6 mentions that Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. His deep relationship with God helped him mature in faith and trust in God's perfect timing. As your relationship with God grows stronger, you'll recognize His voice more clearly without struggling to understand it. This deeper connection with God allows you to discern His will with greater ease, which is a crucial aspect of spiritual growth. Now, understanding God's will regarding your spouse is significant. Are you receiving a green light from God? By seeking clarity on whether you're receiving a green light from God, you're acknowledging the importance of aligning your life choices with His plan for you. You may have asked yourself these questions, feeling weighed down and thinking that God wasn't hearing your prayers. In this video, I'll share some signs with you you may have overlooked, indicating that God is saying yes to your spouse. Please, watch until the end and feel free to like and share this video with friends and family who may need to hear this message. Dear Saint, God communicates with each of us in unique ways, tailored to our individual relationships with Him. It's possible that God's been speaking to you about your future spouse, perhaps in ways you haven't recognized. When it comes to discerning God's voice, there are specific signs to be attentive to and you may already be experiencing these signs without fully realizing their significance. Thus, I believe that you watching this video is not a coincidence. God wants you to understand what He's saying so that you can enter into the reality He's prepared for you. Now, here are the signs that can indicate that God is saying yes concerning that person whom He's chosen to be your spouse. Number one, peace and inner confirmation. Feeling a deep sense of peace and calmness can be a powerful indicator of God's yes. This inner tranquility serves as an assurance that God is guiding you towards this relationship and potential marriage. While you might have expected a revelation through a dream or vision, God communicates in many ways. The peace you experience signifies His hand in the relationship. Have you ever noticed that even on a challenging day, the presence of this person brings you a sense of peace that transcends the difficulties. This is God's way of affirming that this person is right for you. Jeremiah 29.11 reassures us that God's thoughts are of peace and not of harm, offering us hope and a promising future. Recognizing this sign and understanding its significance can provide valuable insights into God's guidance for your relationship and other areas of your life. It's a beautiful journey of faith and trust, allowing God to lead you towards a fulfilling and purposeful union, filling your heart with peace. Number two, support for spiritual growth and values. When your potential spouse supports your spiritual growth and values, it can be a strong indication of God's affirmation in that relationship. This often goes unnoticed, 
but it's a significant sign of God's hand in the relationship. Do not let the emotional excitement turn your gaze from what truly matters when saying yes to the person God's bringing into your life. Above all else, your spiritual growth is paramount. Therefore, you must seek out someone who helps you grow. An alignment of values and mutual encouragement to serve God are clear indicators of His guidance. Amos 3.3 emphasizes the importance of agreement and walking together, highlighting the harmony between spiritual beliefs and values. The presence of a deepening spiritual connection and shared motivation towards God's will is a testament to God's approval of the relationship. It signifies His desire for both individuals to uplift and support each other in their journey of faith. Remember that the Bible says in 1 Timothy 2.4, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. This verse underlines God's desire for all to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth, emphasizing the significance of a relationship that strengthens spiritual growth this means he would never bring someone into your life who would push you away from him. This is a vital sign to look out for, my dear friend. When someone comes into your life and supports your spiritual development, your prayer life, and your ministry, then it might be a sign God is saying yes to a relationship with them. Push your fears aside and trust God to guide you. Number three, healthy boundaries and respect Another vital sign of God's affirmation in a relationship is the absence of a solely physical focus. When the focus remains on building a strong, respectful connection without undue emphasis on physical intimacy, it reflects a reverence for the sanctity of marriage and a commitment to honor God's design for relationships. In a world that thrives on physical pleasures and immorality, this is a very important virtue to look out for in the person God sends your way. If they're keen on helping you maintain healthy boundaries and doesn't disrespect you or your body, even with your consent, then it's a good sign to go forward in a relationship. We must strive to honor God, no matter how we feel or where we are. Hebrews 13.4 says, Let marriage be held in honor among all, and let the marriage bed be undefiled, for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. This verse emphasizes the honor and purity of marriage, highlighting the importance of upholding the sanctity of physical intimacy within the marital bond. The avoidance of sexual pressure or inappropriate advances signifies a deep respect for God's principles and a commitment to honoring His plan for a pure and honorable relationship. 1 Corinthians 6.18 underscores the need to flee from sexual immorality emphasizing the importance of honoring God's design for physical intimacy. Obedience to God's Word indeed plays a pivotal role in guiding the path of a relationship towards success and fulfillment. Number 4. The Overflow of Affection Alright, so picture this. You started noticing a surge of love and affection from your partner. It's like a warm, comforting embrace from God Himself. Now, don't let doubt creep in. When you feel that deep connection, understand that it's God signaling you to move forward. Sure, you might be tempted to wait for more signs, but here's the thing. God expects us to have faith. If He's allowing your partner to continuously shower you with love, and if you notice your own love continues to grow stronger, it's a clear sign. God doesn't deal in fleeting infatuations. He's all about that unwavering, enduring love. So when you see it, embrace it and trust that God is saying, yes, my child. Remember, if God didn't see a future together, that affection would fade away. So cherish the love that grows stronger, knowing it's God's way of guiding you. Number five, confirmation from trusted believers. Now, seeking advice is crucial. Proverbs 1.5 reminds us that a wise person listens and learns from others. So, when you consult trusted believers, spiritual leaders, or those devoted brethren in your life, it's like getting divine confirmation. These people have insights into relationships, and when they nod in agreement, it's a powerful affirmation from God. He uses wisdom from others to guide us. So pay attention to that godly counsel. It's a sign that God is giving you the green light. 
So in wrapping this up, remember these signs are God's way of guiding your spiritual and relational journey. Seek God's wisdom, pray for the Holy Spirit's guidance, and reaffirm your relationship with Him. This is very crucial if you want to be led by Him without struggling. As you follow these signs, you'll experience peace, stronger bonds, spiritual growth, mutual trust, and confirmation from fellow believers. When all these pieces fall into place, you can be confident that God is saying a resounding yes. Trust in Him, my dear friend. Even when the doors seem closed, God is leading you towards making the right choices in your relationship. I pray that the Lord God will bless you abundantly on this journey. And may you find and enjoy your relationship with the person He's prepared for you. Consider the story of Ruth and Boaz in the Bible, a tale of unexpected love and divine orchestration. It wasn't just chance that brought Ruth to Boaz's field. It was a series of divinely orchestrated events, leading her to a place of blessing and favor. Like Ruth, when you find yourself being led to someone in a way that feels guided, when the circumstances align in a manner that seems more than just coincidence, it's a sign to pay attention to. But how do you know for sure? It's not about a single sign, but a tapestry of them, weaving together to form a clear picture. Perhaps it's the way you both share a deep commitment to your faith, how your core values resonate in perfect harmony, or the sense of purpose and direction you feel when together. These signs, when combined, create a compelling narrative, urging you to explore the potential of a relationship blessed by God. As we delve into this topic, let's not just look for one sign, but let's seek a constellation of them, guiding us like stars in the night sky. Number one, finding that person with whom your soul resonates, a person you're equally yoked with. Being equally yoked isn't a mere suggestion. It's a divine guideline etched into the very fabric of a faith-driven relationship. It's about sharing a yoke with someone who aligns with your spiritual journey, making the burden lighter and the path more joyful. But remember, this alignment isn't just about sharing beliefs. It's about sharing a mutual, genuine affection. When your heart flutters for someone who also walks in faith alongside you, it's as if the heavens are whispering, this is the one. However, caution is the watchword. The allure of romantic feelings can sometimes cloud our judgment. It's tempting to overlook spiritual mismatch when your heart's involved. But consider this, a house built on a shaky foundation will eventually crumble. The scripture is clear about not being unequally yoked, not as a restriction, but as a protection. It's an invitation to build your relationship on solid ground ensuring that both your love and faith can withstand any storm. There are tales, of course, of those who walked with partners of different faiths and eventually found common spiritual ground. While these stories are heartwarming, they are not the blueprint. Your journey is your own, and it's crafted by a higher wisdom. Trust that. Trust that you don't need to bend the divine guidelines to find true love. Trust that the right person, equally yoked and equally in love, is out there. In this journey of heart and spirit, always return to the scriptures as your compass. They're not just words. They are the guiding stars on your path to finding a love that's both spiritually nurturing and romantically fulfilling. And remember, any deviation from this divine path isn't just about the risk of heartache. It's about the ripple effects it has on your spiritual well-being. So, as you stand at the crossroads of heart and faith, choose the path lit by divine wisdom. Choose to wait for someone who not only sparks love in your heart, but also walks in step with your soul. For in this sacred harmony lies the true essence of a relationship blessed by the heavens. This isn't just about finding love. It's about finding a partnership that elevates both your love and your faith. Number two. If the one you admire also holds you in an affectionate regard, this may very well be a nudge from above. Picture this scenario as a bridge built from both ends. Your feelings meet in the middle with mutual respect and affection. 
This isn't just about liking someone. It's about finding symmetry in your spiritual and emotional journey. Consider the broader picture. Instead of pondering why it's God's will for you to be with someone, perhaps the question should pivot to, what divine reason could there be to possibly keep two souls eager to honor God through a righteous relationship apart? God, in His infinite wisdom, created the beautiful dance of romance. It delights Him to see His children seeking to embrace and honor this gift within the sacred bond of marriage. Imagine a garden where two plants grow side by side, each reaching towards each other, intertwining their branches in a dance choreographed by nature itself. This is the essence of a relationship blessed by mutual desire. It's a powerful affirmation that perhaps the divine sees no obstacle in your union. Now it's crucial to proceed with discernment. No path is without its potential pitfalls and every heart's yearning must be examined with honesty and prayer. However, the absence of significant barriers, those clear resounding signals that caution you to step back, can be a compelling indication that your relationship is on a blessed trajectory. Reflect on this. God's design is intricate and intentional. Love in its truest form is a reflection of His grace and goodness. When two hearts, both seeking to glorify God, come together, it's a harmony that resonates with His grand design. As you ponder this path, remember to weave Scripture into your contemplation. Verses like 1 Corinthians 13, 4-7 remind us of love's true nature, patient, kind, and devoid of envy. Let these words guide your heart as you consider the journey ahead with the one who might stand beside you. Number three, when your friendship has matured to its fullest, yet there's a mature yearning to delve deeper. Picture this, you've built a solid foundation of friendship with someone. This isn't just ordinary friendship. It's one where Christ is at the center, guiding your interactions and growth. As Proverbs 27, 17 says, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Your relationship has a sharpening effect on each other, spiritually and emotionally. But then there's a shift. You find yourselves at a crossroads where the depth of your friendship beckons you towards something more. It's like standing at the edge of a beautiful cliff, looking out over the horizon, feeling that pull to step into a new adventure. This isn't about fleeting feelings or superficial attraction. It's about recognizing that your connection has the potential to glorify God in a new, profound way as a romantic partnership. Consider this, in any friendship, especially one between a man and a woman, there's a unique dynamic. When this dynamic starts aligning with God's design for a romantic relationship, it's worth paying attention to. Emotional bonds deepen, conversations become more meaningful, and you find yourself genuinely desiring the best for each other in a way that surpasses mere friendship. However, with this deepening emotional connection comes responsibility. It's crucial to understand that emotional intimacy should be in balance with commitment. As 1 Corinthians 13, 4-7 reminds us, love is patient, kind, and does not envy or boast. It's not proud or self-seeking. This kind of love requires a level of commitment that safeguards both hearts involved. So, if you find that your friendship has grown to its fullest, yet there's a mutual desire to explore this connection in a deeper, more committed way, it could very well be a sign that God is leading you towards a romantic relationship with this person. It's about taking that leap of faith under His guidance to see where this beautiful path of deepened friendship and potential love leads. Remember, each journey is unique, and while the signposts might be similar, your walk with God is distinctly yours. Number four, it's less about finding the one and more about understanding God's guidance in your current season. Think of it this way. If your heart is drawn to someone and you're contemplating dating, but the question, are they my forever, is casting a shadow over your decision, you might be jumping ahead. Often we seek answers for the end of the story when we haven't even read the first chapter. It's like we're asking God for the final scene of a movie while ignoring the opening credits. 
Instead of inquiring, is this the person I'm destined to marry? Why not ask, is this someone I should get to know better right now? Do not forget, God's guidance isn't a loud booming voice dictating each step. It's a gentle nudge, a whisper through His Word, the Holy Spirit's peace in your heart, and the open and closed doors in your life. He's not a fortune teller revealing the end from the beginning. He's a guide illuminating the next few steps. It's also about wisdom. Rushing into marriage or dismissing a potential relationship without thought isn't wisdom. It's recklessness or fear. Wisdom is acknowledging that you don't have all the answers, but are willing to take the journey. If you're certain someone isn't your future spouse, then indeed it's wise not to lead their heart into a romance. Conversely, if every sign, every prayer, and every moment with them points to a shared future, then perhaps it's time to move forward. But what if you're in the middle of uncertainty? That's often where God wants you to step out in faith. Dating can be that step, a journey you embark on together to discover God's plan for you both. As you navigate these decisions, immerse yourself in Scripture. Verses like Proverbs 3, 5-6 remind us to trust in the Lord rather than our understanding and acknowledge Him in all our ways. Let this be your compass. Reflect on how your relationship aligns with biblical principles of love, respect, and mutual growth. Seek counsel from those who walk in wisdom and have a heart for your spiritual well-being. In the journey of love, especially when seeking a godly partner, it's not uncommon to find yourself drawn to someone unexpectedly. It may even be challenging when your feelings aren't reciprocated immediately, despite believing that this person is meant to be your godly spouse. Dearly beloved, it's crucial to recognize that God operates in His unique way, revealing His plan to us at different times. God's ways are different from ours because He sees the bigger picture. He knows the past experiences and hurts that your potential spouse may have endured, making it difficult for them to open up to love again. He may be using you to show them the possibility of love once more. When God reveals your partner to you, it's also an opportunity for you to discern and accept His choice willingly. Remember, God never forces a spouse on anyone, and understanding His timing is crucial. If your feelings are not reciprocated immediately, do not be disheartened. God doesn't waste time, and His instructions have a purpose. If He has directed you to develop feelings for someone, it's not in vain. Keep the faith, stay committed, and trust in God's timing. It's essential to persevere, knowing that those who follow God's guidance and direction never regret it. Trust that, in time, everything will fall into place according to God's divine plan. In navigating this challenging period, remember to anchor your trust in God. Pray for the grace and understanding to love, even if the feelings are not reciprocated. It's crucial to recognize that these feelings are orchestrated by God, not mere infatuation or personal desires. God desires clarity, not confusion, and He wants you to comprehend His process. If you find yourself in this situation, trust that there's a purpose. Understanding that purpose is the first step before God leads you out of this phase. God may allow these feelings to persist to teach you patience and maturity in various aspects of your life. Accept this process. If you make improvements, God may change the situation in due time. If God doesn't intend for you to love that person, He may redirect your path. God's care and love mirror the discipline of earthly parents, ensuring that His children stay on the right path. Embrace the process Trust in God's wisdom and remember that His plans are always for your ultimate good. Friends, it's a profound truth that God can instill love within you for someone who may not reciprocate those feelings. This experience serves as a lesson to continuously love, even in the face of rejection. God, being omnipotent, uses various methods to teach His children, and sometimes 
It's through the complex emotion of loving someone who may not love you in return. This process allows you to comprehend and embody unconditional love, mirroring God's genuine love for you. Many people profess love for God verbally, but their hearts and actions may not align. God places these feelings within you to teach you how to extend love to those who may not initially receive it, helping you to understand how the love of God works. This is very important to learn because of the world we live in today. In a world marked by selfishness and hatred, genuine love can be a transformative force. God may be using your love as a means to teach someone who has forgotten how to love or has been wounded by previous experiences. Initially, this journey may be challenging as your gestures may be met with rejection and your sincerity misunderstood. It requires patience and understanding that there may be a story behind the person's reluctance to accept love. They may have endured hardships and betrayal, making it difficult for them to trust in sincere love. Your role, orchestrated by God, is to become a vessel of love, teaching them the reasons to love again. As time progresses, God's plan will unfold, aligning everything according to His purpose since He is the one who has placed these feelings within you. Trust in His wisdom and let your love be a guiding light for those who have lost the will to love. The Bible beautifully outlines the true essence of love in 1 Corinthians 13, 4-7. Love is patient, kind, free of envy, boasting, and pride. It honors others, does not seek its own interests, is slow to anger, and forgives freely. Love rejoices in the truth and always protects, trusts, hopes, and perseveres. God's purpose in making you love someone, even without their reciprocation, is to bring meaning to love in their life. It's a profound way to demonstrate the unconditional love God extends to us. Love is a divine emotion, and as God is love, He has bestowed upon each of us the grace and ability to love one another. God's love for us persists despite our shortcomings, and He calls us to emulate this love on earth. Even when we were undeserving sinners, Christ sacrificed Himself for us, exemplifying the true meaning of love. In John 10, 34, Jesus reminds us that we are like gods on earth, capable of representing Christ's love to our friends, families, and even those who may not seem deserving. The reality is that none of us truly deserves God's love, yet we are all recipients of His boundless love. Loving someone who may not love you back becomes a test, challenging you on various levels. Therefore, you need to make patience paramount in enduring this journey, preventing frustration and the temptation to give up when your love feels unreciprocated. This test also becomes an opportunity for spiritual growth as enduring through the challenges allows you to reflect on God's unwavering love, even in the face of adversity. Trust in God's plan and remain patient, for in doing so, you become a vessel of His love on earth. In the journey of finding a life partner, it is natural to feel overwhelmed and uncertain, especially when past experiences or societal opinions cast doubt on the process. However, we can find genuine guidance and assurance in the unfailing wisdom of God. By aligning our thoughts with God's Word and disregarding the world's judgment, we open ourselves to divine revelations about choosing the right spouse. Friends, it is important to recognize that God's love for us is constant, and He desires to spare us from any emotional burdens that may arise in the future. Therefore, Understanding God's role as the ultimate matchmaker adds a profound dimension to our understanding of relationships. Beyond being our creator, healer, deliverer, protector, and provider, God is also actively involved in the business of matchmaking. This is not a mere obligation, but a divine responsibility that our Heavenly Father takes on. In our pursuit of a godly marriage, it is crucial to acknowledge the need to obey and cooperate with God. However, many of us find it challenging to heed God's guidance, 
and may even choose to ignore his whispers about a specific individual. But we need to know that disobedience can lead to mistakes and result in veering off the path that God has set for us. When we trust in God and seek His direction in relationships, we demonstrate a transformative act of faith. We should earnestly seek Him. By doing so, we not only please Him, but also establish a firm foundation for a relationship that can withstand the test of time. And how do we seek God for our partner? The process of seeking God's direction involves prayer and a willingness to follow His lead. God, in His all-knowing nature, guides us through both the known and unknown aspects of life. Although the world may deem such trust as foolish, having faith in God's promises is the key to enduring trials and overcoming challenges. Hebrews 11.6 says, And without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists, and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. This verse emphasizes the significance of faith in pleasing God, and embarking on the journey towards a godly marriage requires unwavering faith. Seeking God's guidance and partnering with Him ensures that everything falls into place according to His divine plan. When God is involved with the process of selecting a spouse, it surpasses mere human calculations. The world may mock such faith, but in God's eyes, it is an act of trust and obedience. Our faith becomes the vehicle through which God orchestrates His divine plan for our relationships. Having faith means refraining from comparing ourselves to others, as each person's journey is unique. Engaging in comparisons only breeds frustration, especially when it feels like others are progressing faster. It is important to remember that elevation and blessings come solely from God. The story of Abraham's servant selecting a wife for Isaac serves as a powerful illustration of the significance of seeking God's guidance in relationships. Trusting in Him and following His plan leads to a fulfilling and lasting marriage that aligns with His perfect will. My sincere prayer is that you emerge strengthened during this phase, and that God, who has placed these emotions within you, will reveal the purpose behind them and guide you on how to navigate them. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. If you have found this video uplifting, kindly give it a thumbs up, share this video, and subscribe to our channel. Listen, literally anyone can claim and act like they are sincerely in love with you. It's wicked and insane. But this is one of the most absurd yet very common experiences in the dating world right now. Here's how you can avoid falling for this trap. You may have a special someone right now, but you're not entirely sure whether their feelings for you are as genuine as they say. Let me say first that this proves that you're already on the right path. Love is the product of faith, goodness, knowledge, self-control, perseverance, godliness, and mutual affection. If you read 1 Peter 3, 7, you will learn that love is the final addition to all of these qualities. Therefore, being committed to discerning if this person genuinely loves you is already a testament to the mentioned qualities, knowledge, and perseverance. True love is especially difficult to recognize because it is a matter that belongs to the bottom of our hearts and only God can see through us. No matter how long you've been together, how much you've screened this person, or how much your friends and family like them. You can never be sure that their love for you is genuine. Only Christ can give you the enlightenment you need regarding this person's true feelings for you. One thing is for sure, you accept the love that you think you deserve. This is why we must learn more about what true love looks like in Christian dating so that we can never settle for less. This message seeks to help you conquer your anxiety about this matter. If you're already with your soulmate, God will want to assure you that the love you share will last a lifetime. Here are three undeniable signs He will show you to confirm that someone truly loves you. The first sign is when this person makes you feel an incomparable level of trust and security. Let me tell you why this is a very relevant sign. Nowadays, people seem to be really into fast-paced relationships. They may be trying to follow a distinct timeline for their love life, 
They might not be capable of being alone. They might be after affection and not love itself. We see individuals who enter relationships left and right without taking the time to discern if their partner is sincere or worse, they have this seemingly wonderful partner that they can't communicate about their problems properly. Have you ever encountered someone broadcasting their relationship issues publicly or gossiping about their partner's actions with others? Why do they do that? It's because people like them are trapped in relationships that are not meant for them. They have partners who they can't trust and don't feel safe with because they do not give weight to this first sign. Love and trust strengthen partnerships. One can't be without the other. Why do you think there are scriptures that tell us to trust in the Lord with all our hearts? It's so we learn that to trust is to give every ounce of strength, energy, and emotion. Having said this, the Lord urges you to reflect if this person is someone you can trust with your life. Do you feel safe when you're with them? How do they respond when you confide your problems with them? If this is not the case, you need to be cautious because feeling unsafe with someone you see as a partner foreshadows a damaging relationship founded on superficial feelings. Insecurity can branch out into jealousy, dependency, and dishonesty. This is definitely not what our Father wants for you. A person who truly loves you will consistently prove to you that they are your rock, always by your side no matter what happens. They will not leave you high and dry. 1 Corinthians 13.7 says that love always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. This person's behavior and actions should always make you feel protected and safe. They should make you feel confident in yourself and the relationship and trust that no temptation or attempt from the wicked can ever break through these walls. Trust, my friend, goes a very long way. Another undeniable sign is when they help you be better every day. If you want to know how someone really feels about you, you would want to look at who you are when you're with them. To be loved is to be changed. The question is, has this person's love changed you for the better? As the Lord continuously shapes you in His image, one of the biggest roles of your soulmate is to contribute to this. True love brings out our truest identities in Christ, and so the love they have for you should be nothing but empowering. We read in Thessalonians 5.11 that we are asked to encourage one another and build each other up, just as, in fact, you are doing. At this point, you must ask yourself where your relationship with this person has taken you so far. Believe me that some partners lift each other to reach their goals while some drag each other down. There will be people who claim that they love you, but they're gradually bringing you away from your closest ones in your aspirations. What kind of love is that? Will someone who truly loves you tell you to put them over your career? Or will they tell you to put your dreams on the back burner? No, that is not how true love works. Paul says in Philippians 1.7, I hold you in my heart, for we have shared together God's blessings. This is exactly the kind of bond that should be present in a relationship. This person must respect that God has blessed both of you in order to complement and bring out the best in each other. They are called to be an agent of encouragement and wisdom so that you can be more. As they say, in love lies the seed of our growth. It's about giving what your partner needs to grow and become a greater living testimony to God's love. Take this for an example. When Mary was pregnant with Jesus, Joseph was ready to walk away as he had every right to do so. But he didn't because he trusted the message delivered by the angel. And most of all, Joseph wanted to protect Mary and didn't want her to face allegations of infidelity. He helped raise Jesus because that is what true love does. It helped him become a better person so that he could alleviate his wife's situation. Ecclesiastes 4.9 says, Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. Good return for their labor means the two of you are expected to yield double the outcome. Now, your true love must support you and help generate greater results that will benefit both of you. This is all so that God may dwell in your hearts and bless your relationship further. As educator John Bradshaw said, if we do not grow because of someone else's love, it's generally because it's a counterfeit form of love. 
If your partner consistently radiates positive energy, the kind that makes you want to do more and be better, it's one of the strongest signs of sincere love. Lastly, you'll know that God is showing you that someone really loves you when they lead you closer to God. Think about the kind of relationship you have with them. I want you to answer this honestly. Is this person leading you closer to God or to themselves? To give you a clearer description, let me share the story of Elkanah. He had two wives, Penina and Hannah. Penina gave him children, but Hannah was infertile. Despite this, Elkanah treasured Hannah deeply. He offered more to Hannah even when the Lord closed her womb. Seeing how Elkanah's love was exceptionally pure, Hannah's faith grew stronger and she trusted in God to grant her the ability to conceive. Eventually, God fulfilled her request. Most men in that situation would have left or shamed Hannah for her inability to bear a child. They would have selfishly focused on their desire for a child and resented Hannah. But Elkanah provided comfort and unconditional love that nudged Hannah to pursue a closer relationship with God. Do you see the difference? You must understand that true love, even if it's in the context of human relationships, can never take place without the involvement of God. Arthur Tony Gaskins Jr. once said, If a man isn't following God, he isn't fit to lead. If he doesn't have a relationship with God, he won't know how to have a relationship with you. If he doesn't know God, he doesn't know real love. Brothers and sisters, if someone truly loves you, the only path you should be on right now is towards Christ. This is the only kind of love that has the approval of God. True love is Christ-centered. This person's love should honor and glorify His name, abide by godly standards, and boost your spiritual growth. Nothing is taken away when your partner's love is in service to God. It actually gives you more as a recipient. In 1 John 4, 16, And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. Honestly, would you believe that the person has true feelings for you? when they don't magnify our Father, who is the only source of unconditional love. There's just no way. God is quite literally our first love. If this person does not honor this fact, then what kind of love could they give you? And this is why this last sign is the ultimate confirmation. Words and actions can never capture the real intention of a person, which is why, as believers, we have to persevere and ask for God's help in confirming whether someone truly loves us or not. He has called us to love in truth, and we can only fulfill this if we pay close attention to the kind of love we receive from people. Do you ever find yourself pondering why thoughts of a particular person persistently occupy your heart and mind each day? This could be a friend or a loved one navigating through a challenging season or it might be someone unfamiliar to you. Regardless, you simply cannot shake off these recurring thoughts. They linger, disrupting your daily life. Could it be that these persistent thoughts are God's way of directing your attention towards that person? In today's video, we aim to explore the significance of constantly thinking about someone and what it might signify in the context of God's guidance. We encourage you to pay close attention as we delve into this topic, as it could profoundly impact your relationships and journey towards marriage. We kindly ask you to take a moment to subscribe to our channel, appreciate this video by liking it, and share it at least once to help us reach more individuals and be a source of blessings to others. In Proverbs 3, 5 to 6, it's written, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to Him, and He will make your path straight. These thoughts about someone, they don't just appear out of nowhere. They're not mere products of your imagination. Various factors contribute to their presence. However, we can find reassurance in the fact that there is a purpose behind them. And the first step is understanding their source. Regardless of where these thoughts originate, there's always a deeper meaning. By the end of this discussion, we'll gain insight into how God communicates through these thoughts and what actions He may be guiding us to take. Now, 
let's explore some reasons why persistent thoughts of someone may be occupying our hearts. One possible reason is that God may be prompting you to reach out or to pray for that person. Typically, fleeting thoughts of others can easily be dismissed, but when they persist, it could indicate that God is trying to convey a message to you. James 5.16 encourages us to confess our sins to one another and pray for each other, emphasizing the powerful and effective nature of the prayers of the righteous. Your prayer at that moment could hold significant meaning for the person you're thinking of. The Bible teaches that the earnest prayers of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. In 1 Timothy 2, we're urged to offer prayers and intercessions for all people, including those in positions of authority. So if someone keeps reoccurring in your thoughts, it may be a divine nudge to lift them up in prayer, seeking guidance, protection, or strength for their lives. When you pray for someone enduring tough times, you're asking God to provide guidance and protection for them. This person may even be a stranger, completely unfamiliar to you. But by prompting these thoughts, God's calling you to intercede on their behalf. God places these thoughts in your mind so that you may lift them up in prayer or even to reach out to them, regardless of any distance or barriers. By doing so, you're demonstrating obedience, compassion, and love, aligning with the desires of our Heavenly Father. In Matthew 22, Jesus teaches us to love our neighbor as ourselves. When someone occupies your thoughts consistently, it could be a sign that your heart's being filled with love and compassion for them. Hence, God is prompting you to pray for their well-being, display kindness, or extend a helping hand if they're in need. While it may be challenging initially, there are rewards in following God's will. Through these actions as a child of God, you foster meaningful relationships with others. And again, there's no need to fear. If God has placed someone in your heart, simply trust in Him. He'll protect you no matter what. Don't forget that you're not really doing it for them, but for the Lord Himself, as the Bible says in Matthew 25, 40. The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whenever you assist someone placed in your heart by God, you're demonstrating your loyalty to God as your Father. Don't feel overwhelmed by persistent thoughts of someone in your spirit. Remember that if these thoughts endure, God may be trying to communicate with you. Your intercession and acts of generosity can alleviate any challenges or troubles they may be facing at that moment. The second reason why God continually places someone in your heart is that they may be the one He has destined for you. God desires for us to be happy and have a fulfilling marriage. This is echoed in the scripture in Proverbs 18.22. He who finds a wife finds what is good and receives favor from the Lord. The persistent thoughts are one of God's ways of directing you to the right person. To discern if that person might be the right one for you, you must seek God's guidance through prayer, seek His confirmation, observe if the person shares your values, and rely on your relationship with God to lead you to the one meant for you. Sometimes, when you find yourself constantly thinking about someone, it may be a sign from God urging you to forgive and let go. Forgiveness is a compassionate act that brings peace to our hearts and those around us. In Matthew 5, 23-24, it's written, Therefore, if you're offering a gift at the altar, and there remember your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to them, then come and offer your gift. In these verses, Jesus instructs us to reconcile with others before presenting our offerings to God. If persistent thoughts of someone reflect unresolved conflicts or strained relationships, it could be God prompting us to seek forgiveness, extend forgiveness, or take steps toward reconciliation. At times, we may have unresolved issues with someone, and thoughts about them linger in our hearts and minds. When these thoughts persist, it may be God's way of encouraging you to release them and forgive. 
The thing about forgiveness is that when you practice it, you're also benefiting, not just the person you forgave. The Bible states in Colossians 3.13, Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. Jesus himself told us that unless we forgive those who offend us, our Heavenly Father will not forgive us our own sins. These scriptures emphasize the importance of forgiveness as commanded by God. While forgiveness may not come easily, as a child of God, it's vital for your own healing. So, my dear friend, when you find yourself constantly thinking of someone, recognize that God may be trying to communicate with you, either to pray for them or to forgive them. It can be challenging, but remember that God's always with you to guide you through it all. Another reason why God continuously brings thoughts of others to your mind may be that He wants to nurture a relationship with them and the person involved might be part of His plan for you. It's not unusual for God to place people in our hearts for a purpose. Our Heavenly Father pays attention to and is involved in our daily lives. His presence aids in our spiritual growth and provides guidance. This is why the book of Proverbs urges us to trust in the Lord and seek His guidance in all our ways. When you find yourself constantly thinking about someone, it could be God's way of indicating a task, message, or growth opportunity within that relationship. It might be a nudge to seek His wisdom and discern His purpose in that connection. As you grow closer to this person, you might find it difficult to resist thoughts of them. Remember, this is all orchestrated by God, who operates according to His divine standards. God delights in seeing two people He's ordained come together and experience a fulfilling marriage. The first man, Adam, would not have fulfilled his purpose without his union with Eve. This demonstrates God's intention for divine connections and relationships. When you sense God leading you toward someone, remember He has a unique purpose and plan for every relationship. Trust in His plan and remain open to His guidance. Even if you don't fully comprehend the reason behind the constant thoughts, remember that if they're from God, there's a purpose behind them, and that purpose includes a beautiful and promising future. My dear brother, my dear sister, God desires for you to build a fulfilling home with someone special, a home that reflects the love of Jesus and His mission on earth. The recurring thoughts of this person may indicate that God has appointed them to bring you comfort and support your journey and destiny in life. Therefore, when someone occupies your thoughts persistently, it's essential to pray for wisdom and discernment to comprehend God's intentions and purposes in that situation. God's guidance may manifest through scripture, prayer, seeking counsel from wise believers, or through personal revelation in your heart. Stay attuned to the guidance and prompting of the Holy Spirit and trust in God's loving guidance as you navigate this relationship and respond to the thoughts that captivate your mind.